Hi guys, it's Dr. Ron Miller here with CashBasedPhysiotherapy.org and today we're going over a step-by-step -step process of how a DPT student can open up a cash-based physical therapy practice after graduation. So you can see here I kind of wrote, I wrote out my timeline here from school to preparation phase to an actual example of what to expect when you open up your doors. So let's get started with this. So when you're starting out in school, okay, this first track here is DPT school. Um, you have two main goals of what I try to promote for uh, people who kind of ask me questions or like mentor or um, two examples, but you have two main goals here. Your first goal is to graduate and pass your boards because if you don't pass your boards, none of this means pretty much anything. But two, your goal is not to be the best student. Be the best physical therapist. That's what I kind of educate um, students who observe here, or kind of come here for clinicals. You're already in school. You know, it's hard to fail out of DPT school. You know, your goal now is not to be the best student. It's to be the best physical therapist and take full advantage of that, uh, whether it's shadowing other clinicians or taking some of the best con ed courses for a cheaper rate, getting involved in the APTA and your state organization. So um, these are the two goals here right now. And nothing should take your focus out of that right now. But if you want to read some great books at this time, it's great to just have a side read over time, over a couple years, and read these books. If I could recommend any books, um, highly recommend Rich Dad Poor Dad. will educate you on some basic finance stuff and the mindset of an entrepreneur. Um, I would also read uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. That's a great book to put you in the business mindset of how to talk to people. And um, I'm trying to think what else. Think, think and Grow Rich is a classic. Um, it's a longer book to read. Um, if you wanted to get another entrepreneurial book to get the business mindset, another great one is The Secrets of a Millionaire Mind. So any of those three or four books will be excellent reads for you to start at this stage throughout PT school. But again, your main goals are clearly to graduate and pass your boards and to be the best physical therapist, okay? So now I listed here, there's three tracks that you could possibly do in order to open up a cash-based clinic. So the first one is finding a mentor. If you know someone who's doing exactly what you want to do, there's nothing wrong with you going to work for that person and learning from them for one to two years. You know, if you know exactly what type of practice that you want to open up and there's someone out there doing it already, you know, why not sign up and have him be your mentor? Go and work for that person for one to two years. Um, learn from them. Um, ask questions. You know, learn how the system works. That's a great way in order to open up a cash-based clinic. Um, the one thing you have to watch with this is the non the non compete clause. If you know that you want to open your business in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and your mentor has a clinic in Philly. You know, he may have you sign a non-compete clause with that. So you may have to pick a mentor in a different location than where you want to open up your cash-based clinic. Um, another option here is to do a residency. If you're in the right position finance-wise and you have a year that you can get good quick, I recommend new grads to do a residency so you can get good quick, whether it's orthopedics, whether it's sport, pediatrics, neuro, like whatever, whatever you want to do, you know, I think that you need to get good quick at it in order to open up a cash-based clinic. So doing a residency is a great option. Sucking up for a year, um, getting good quick, and that will give you the skill set to be able to treat a lot of patients and get them better, faster, quicker, with better results. So that's another option. The same thing with this, the problem that I ran into is yes, I did a residency where I wanted to open up my clinic. So again, I ran into the non-compete clause problem, but I was able to work my way around it, you know, made things work as I was planning for a year or two. I fulfilled my non-compete clause 
part of that and then um, I was able to open up my business two years later so um, this one you may have to take a small pay cut with but you know you do a residency to get the skill sets and the critical thinking part of it it's okay to take a pay cut just a little bit for this and learn 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 and then get the skill set to be able to open up your cash based clinic the third way which I only recommend if you are it, you know, throughout P PT school, if you've already established yourself as a personal trainer, an athletic trainer, and you have um, a niche market that you've already tapped into locally around your school, that's a good a little window where you could technically go straight from PT school right into um, your niche market, opening a business and going right into a cash-based clinic. So um, I only recommend this if you already have a established reputation locally and you're helping people and they're just waiting f for you to open up your own business I mean that's a no-brainer you can make that happen um, that's the one way where I would recommend someone or a student graduating getting bored um, passing the boards then going straight into business with a direct route right into um, a cash-based physical therapy practice so those are the three different avenues or paths that you can choose in order to open up your cash based clinic. So let's go to the next phase, okay? Now, there's a break here between which track you choose and actually opening an established clinic. And I put this break here because this is where you have to learn business. You have to learn business fundamentals. You know, there's a reason why nine out of 10 businesses fail after three years. Um, you have to learn basic funding. You know, this is a phase where you may have to take some of the money that you saved from here and pay off some credit card debt before you um, open up a clinic. Or, you know, you shouldn't need a lot of capital to be able to open up a clinic. I opened my clinic with, you know, my own money, one to two thousand dollars, and just invested in it, opened up my practice, and kind of took off from there. Um, you'll start learning some business fundamentals, you know, how to write a business plan, what's a business pro forma, opening up your business, establishing yourself as a corporation. Um, so there's a lot of business planning that has to be done here before you open up your stuff. You have to be organized, you have to be goal specific, you have to be focused. So a lot of people skip this phase and just jump into it, but they don't have any goals written out or don't even have anything planned they're just hopping in the business and that's setting you up for failure so I put this break here because you have to do some business planning this is the time period where you pay off some credit card debt you know you get some money saved and point invest your own money I don't think you need to take out a big loan because again you got to keep your overhead low you shouldn't have to take out a business loan um, to start your business you should be able to get a couple grand saved up and be able to open up your own business that way. Um, establishing your business as a corporation, LLC, whatever you and your accountant and lawyer decide to do. Start working on some goals, um, business strategies, etc. in this business planning phase. So then after you do that stuff, then it's time to open up your doors. Okay. So let's look at a three year example here of when you open up your doors, what to expect. Okay. Now here you can clearly see I put year one, two, and three, and these are example numbers of what I established throughout my um, system. So the first year I put, you know, I made seventy-seven thousand dollars in revenue. Okay, and you can clearly see that my expenses were only two thousand dollars a month with that. Okay. Now I've made that red because the first year you may not make any profit and you may just barely even break even. If you do this right, you may be able to expedite this process, but the first year you may not be making profit and you may you know, still be working a PRN job just paying the bills as you grow, grow your business. Um, and if you notice the bar is set kind of low here right now because your expenses are going to be down, your revenue is going to be down. You know, you, you may not even pay yourself the first couple months until you start generating some revenue and then you'll be able to pay yourself a little bit. But the first year is tough and you may still be in the red by the end of the year. So that's perfectly fine. Now, jumping into year two, okay, now you see this drastic increase. This is where my 101 system should be able to get you here by year two, where you're generating over $10,000 a monthly revenue with this. And notice that 
you know, my line went up a little bit. So maybe you hire another therapist, move into a bigger building, you know, your expenses go up. Now it's, I'm functioning at less than $4,000 a month. But look at all this space here. This is where you start making a lot more money now. So if I'm generating 145000 of yearly revenue in year two, my expenses are, you know, it's almost a pretty much fixed expense amount in a cash-based clinic, your expenses are going to be low. You know, look at all this space where you can start paying yourself a decent salary now. Um, and you'll clearly overcome your expenses, you'll start generating some profits. And again, this is where my 101 system should be able to get you by year two. If you implement the strategies, the marketing, the sales, and the business 101 principles, you should easily be able to make over $10,000 of monthly revenue and you should be doing well right now in year two. So year three, you know, again, my expenses are really the same. You know, I didn't really do anything different, um, but now I'm generating almost $200,000 of monthly revenue. So this is where we hit 180. You could really start paying yourself well um, in this situation, after taxes, you could yearly easily make over you know a hundred thousand a year, maybe eighty thousand a year. But you're you're paying yourself well. You know you can pay off any little debt that you uh, accumulated over this time, and then now you're running a real business. You're generating profit, increasing revenue, and now you can learn how to run a business as an entrepreneur and a small business owner. Um, so the key thing here is with each year your expenses are not going to go way up so your expenses will stay low right here but as your revenue increases you'll be able to pay yourself more and more and more um, as a physical therapist as a staff um, and then eventually in year three we're, we're predicted to go way over two hundred thousand dollars now so, um, so now the question is how do I run my business and how do I grow my business? Do I hire a neurotherapist? Do I open a, se a second location? Etc. So um, one interesting thing that I noticed recently, you may have seen some of my videos on this, but if you look at my marketing budget, my marketing budget is doing this. Where at here you start paying, you know, no one knows about you and no one knows about your business or what you do. Let's face it, no one knows what physical therapy is, nor do insurance companies or any politician really see value in it. So when you're marketing to the public, you know, you may have to spend some money on a marketing strategy. But what I started to realize is that as you establish yourself and you implement, you know, my strategies, that your marketing budget actually goes down. You're not increasing your marketing budget as you make more and more money, that your word of mouth and your local searches start dominating your your revenue leads. So um, your marketing budget will actually go down to a point where when uh, you're here, you can pick and choose whenever you want to run a marketing campaign. Like for example, here in Florida, my slow months are always July and September. So guess what time I'm gonna start launching a, a paid advertising campaign? July and September, but most of the time now you don't I don't have to spend any money on marketing unless I want to or unless I need to now so um, It's a very interesting funding that I didn't expect to happen But I noticed that as my revenue goes up year to year to year that my marketing budget starts to go down and I don't have to spend the money on marketing anymore because if you implement my strategies you should be able to run your business um, and maximizing the word-of-mouth referrals and being able to grow your business without spending tons of money on marketing. So I hope you guys learned something here. Um, I wanted to kind of set a step-by-step -step process for you guys as a new student to go from DPT school. You have three tracks now that you know of to be able to open up a cash-based clinic. Then you have your business planning phase. Um, and then from there you open up your doors, you open up a cash-based clinic, and here's example stats for you to follow. Um, let me know if you have any questions. 
Um, you can send me an email at cashbasedpt at gmail.com or visit the website at cashbasedphysiotherapy.org. Let me know if you have any questions. Please share this video with other students that may be interested in opening a cash-based clinic. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you. And thank, for you, thank you for your time.